What's up, my wizards? It's Dev. That's BMTG. We like magic, especially today, because I finally get to talk about some Ixalan spoilers. Four, four Ixalan spoilers dropped today relatively early, so let's go ahead and talk about these, because some of these are definitely worth getting hype about. First of all, here's Bishop of Rebirth right here. It's five mana, three and two white for a three, four vampire cleric, a white vampire. Look at that. It's got Vigilance and whenever Bishop of Rebirth attacks, you may return target creature card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Reads like Sun Titan, but it's probably more like Nun Titan. You know what I mean? Right here, up top. Man. Anyway, <laughs> this is the first in a line of cards that we'll see today that like harken back to old cards, but like aren't quite as good. And I'm not ripping on them necessarily. Like all these cards today, I'm excited to at least try out in standard. I think they might be pretty good, but that doesn't change the fact that they're a lot like older cards, but not good. Like this isn't Sun Titan. Not even close. Like you don't get the Enter the Battlefield trigger, which is a huge part of Sun Titan. Definitely that. Enables a lot of ridiculous combos, you know. Wizards probably wanted to stay away from those, so I understand that. It also just says creatures and not permanents like Sun Titan, so that's like pretty bad. That's another thing that enables some pretty dumb stuff with Sun Titan, which again, wizards may be straying away from. Like, it's like fixed Sun Titan a little bit, you know, but I don't like that you play it for a whole five mana and then you have to wait an entire turn to like attack with it and get its trigger and then. Who knows what you're going to get with it, you know? Like, there's some stuff you can set up in standard. There's, like, Renegade Rallier to chain another creature. That's part of the dream right there. But there's also, like, I don't know, Champion of Wits and Fairgrounds Warden. Like, there's some stuff in the standard. I guess, like, Rishkar and Ronus, like, any three-mana god, that's a thing, probably. I don't know. But, like, the card doesn't look god-awful, but there's also a bunch of other white vibe drops that are just better. Like, this format's going to have Angel of Dimension and Regal Caracal and Angel of Sanctions, and I think that all those cards are probably better than this one. That said, though, White Vampire. That's kind of cool. Just, you know, it goes ahead and shows us that we're going to see some weird stuff done with the color pie in this set. We're also aware there's going to be green merfolk. So get used to that, but there's going to be a little bit of a shift in the color pie, and I'm always interested when Wizards does that. So if it, this nothing else, if nothing else, this at least like shows us there's going to be some interesting stuff that they do in this set. Here's Burning Sun's Avatar right here. It's six mana, three and three red yeah, for a six six Dino Avatar, man. First dinosaur. Here it is. When Burning Sun's Avatar enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to target opponent and three damage to up to one target creature. Okay, again, it's going to sound like I'm ragging on this card a little bit because I'm going to compare it to Inferno Titan, but I'm still kind of excited to do some stuff with this card. I'll bring up Inferno Titan again in just a second. Get out of here for now, buddy. But anyway, this card looks somewhat exciting. Like, we have some reanimation in the format. You know, we got Godfair's Gift, and we got, like, Liliana, the five mana one. She's going to stick around, so... As far as, like, a reanimation target, I actually think it's kind of good. If you're, being, if you're playing Big Red and you want a Six Drop, this is at least like comparable to combustible gear hulk it's like which one would you play in that situation you're playing big red gear hulk or this probably all depends on whether you're running like an artifact theme of some kind but if you're not then this is probably just better on the other hand though let's bring back inferno titan hey buddy missed you um still miss you <laughs> but in any case um, this is in no way Inferno Titan, but it is definitely what it's supposed to look like. You know, just another Titan that has been in a lot of ways nerfed and Wizards is like, is this okay? You know, <laughs> in a way, because like it can't pump itself. It's still a six mana six, six, but you have to look, you have to work harder for that six mana because there's an extra red symbol, you know, you don't get it when it attacks only when it enters the battlefield, Ugh, you know, like it can't split up the damage that it does. Like, is it bad yet? Is it bad yet? Like, it's probably, it's a much, much worse Inferno Titan, but at least it's it possibly may be standard playable. I don't, at the end of the day, I don't know, and you'll probably have to cheat it out or reanimate it somehow. But either way, it's at least cool. Can we, we can, we can settle on that. It's a cool card. The art is amazing. Speaking of cool cards with amazing art, here's Walk the Plank right here. It's, I love that we have a card called Walk the Plank. It's two black mana for a sorcery. Yeesh. Destroy target non-merfolk creature. Again, with the cards that are kind of like older cards, like this is obviously supposed to be Victim of Night a little bit, but it loses its instant speed, and that is bad. Like, that's bad. It also it looks like it might be meant to replace Grasp of Darkness a little bit, and it is, again, it's sorcery speed, and it, like, can't kill, like, Hazaret and stuff. Like, that's, mm, mm, oh, jeez. Like, I'm, I don't know, man. Like, I do, overall, again, this is another example of a card that I think is a good magic card that will see standard play. Like, look at that'll, that'll probably see standard play. You know, two mana, almost unconditional removal will 
probably take that every time, but whether or not it replaces options that we already have and are about to lose, different story, different I've been making this face a lot. <laughs> it's like, as far as like a fun card, like, yeah, this looks good and utility as heck, but as far as a replacement for Grasp, I, mm, uh, I don't know, man. But I think that's all offset by the fact that you're going to be like, ah, walk the plank every time you play this card. Like, it's a fun, it's a fun card for that reason, if nothing else. So that, we got that to look forward to. But here's the last and best card of the day to my mind. This is Unclaimed Territory. It's a land, and when it comes into play, you choose a creature type. You can tap it for a colorless, or you can tap it to add a mana of any color to your mana pool. But you can only spend that mana to cast a creature spell of the chosen type. So, staying on theme here, this is a Cavern of Souls without the last six words that aren't important at all, right? <laughs> Obviously, this isn't as good as Cavern, but it's still definitely playable, and it's probably going to see play in almost everything. Like, it's going to see play in Standard. Obs it's going to see play in Commander, definitely. And it may even see play in Modern, even though Modern can play Cavern of Souls. Like, really, really dedicated Tribal decks will just play eight Caverns. <laughs> like four caverns in this. Um, or at least I imagine that they will. What's the downside in doing that unless you have a bunch of spells, you know? Um, so at least there's that, but honestly, I don't see why this is bad in any way, literally at all. And it's probably going to really push standard towards tribal in some ways, at least, you know, like we're going to lose some lands, <sighs> you guys <laughs> definitely lose some dual lands and we're getting check lands back or like buddy lands, I think, whatever you want to call these things. We're getting these things back, so I guess that's good, but we are going to need some better lands, and this is one of them. I mean, it pushes us into tribal, but, I mean, you won't have to, like, convince me to play pirates or dinosaurs, really. I'm, I'm fairly, you had me at pirates, but when you added dinosaurs, I was way more excited, so I, I'm not gonna, you're gonna have to push me into tribal too hard here. I guess really it's that you had me at dinosaurs, and then when you added pirates, I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's good, too. So, yeah, anyway. Um, this is also an uncommon. I should point that out before I get out of here. This is uncommon. And, yeah, we've seen, like, uncommon land, like, uh, uncommon land, like Ether Hub. They get, like, 253 bucks at the peak of their price. But even at 250 or 3 this is probably going to be worth playing because it's going to be... I mean, it's going to be worth picking up because it's going to be indexed, like, period, no matter what. And even if it leaves standard... Um, when it leaves standard, if it leaves standard, when it, when it leaves standard, it's still going to be commander playable in like everything tribal. So you're going to pick up some of these at least. But that's all the Ixalan spoilers since <laughs> it's Ixalan. I know that if I mispronounce it on purpose, somebody's going to be like, it's Ixalan, and then give me the, the pronouncement of it. But um, the, pronunci the pronouncement, the pronunciation of it. <laughs> but anyway, Ixalan spoilers. Um, hopefully more will be coming down the pipeline here relatively soon. I mean, these are a, a little bit early by all accounts, but hopefully they'll start cranking them out because I think we're all excited to get this format over with, start fresh with some dinosaurs, and see what we can do with those. So stick with the channel, sub if you haven't done that yet so that you'll get all these spoiler videos when they come out. And we got Blue Black Cycling coming up. Might be our last deck tech of the season, but I'm not sure. I probably got a couple more up my sleeve here that I'm working on and I want to kick out. So stick with us for those two. And very soon now, because I have to do it before the bunch of spoilers come out, I have to do the top five cards that I want. Nixalon, which is always fun. That's always fun. You can also like the video if you enjoyed the video. No brainer there. You can also follow us on Twitter at SBMTGDev or you can throw us your support on Patreon. Just a buck or two helps at patreon.com slash SBMTG. But in any case, guys, I'm done for this one. Hopefully more spoilers will be coming down the pipeline soon and I'll get those to you. But I've been Dev from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards. Well, this video was brought to you in part by my buddies at TCGplayer.com and I figured I'd take a second here in the end card to talk about their new app, not because they asked me to or anything, just because I really like this app. It's 100% free to download and you can just use it to scan cards with your phone and immediately get the price. So it's pretty cool. Like if you're in a dispute with somebody during a trade over the value of a card, you can just scan that card right away and tell them the price of it. <laughs> you know, no, no bones about it. And like... There's a bunch of cards that are about to rotate, so if you want to get the value of those in an expedient way, then you can just, like, lay out a whole group of cards and scan them all at once, <laughs> you know? Like, the app is actually cool for a lot of different stuff, and if you want to trade in a whole list of cards that you scan, it's only one button to do that. So, check the app out. It's actually pretty sweet. But for now, that's all I got to say. I'll see you guys next time.